Integrity. Integrity is a word with deep moral roots in human history. Many philosophers, psychologists, and anthropologists believe that this notion to attach moral meaning to our actions is actually what distinguishes us from other animals. But what exactly do we mean by integrity, and why is it important in business ethics? The word has two definitions. The first definition is the quality of being complete, unbroken, or whole. And the second definition, which is more important for our purposes, is the quality or state of being of sound moral principle, honest and sincere. The first definition is derived from mathematics. An integer, after all, is a whole number. So too is the person with integrity. But merely being whole does not convey much moral meaning. It is the second definition that gives us a deeper understanding of the concept. Being of sound moral principle implies that a person has developed and lives by a certain code of ethics that includes honesty and sincerity. These two moral virtues are cornerstones to human interaction. From the earliest records of human development, we can find evidence that honesty and sincerity were valued aspects of the social network. The simple fact that our dependency on fellow human beings, whether to share food, protection, or procreation, is grounded in an understanding of reciprocity. If we treat people fairly, they, we hope, will treat us fairly in return. But for some people, this idea of playing by the rules of honesty is a sucker's game. We have countless phrases in society that caution against such idealism. Buyer beware, nice guys finish last, there's a sucker born every minute. It is easy to speculate that this may be a modern phenomenon, something that grew out of the modern sense of alienation and deep individualism. But no, sadly, the struggle between doing the right thing and serving one's self-interest has long been a prominent feature of the human condition. Plato devotes much of the Republic to this struggle, providing Socrates with a platform to challenge a prevailing philosophical trend of might makes right. So even in the 5th century BC, the struggle between extreme self-interest and integrity was being played out. For Socrates, as for many contemporary moral philosophers, the person who lives a principled life is happier, in large part because he is in sync with his true nature. The moral hero is not necessarily the person we read about on the front page of the New York Times, but more likely the person we contract with to do work on our homes, to sell us insurance, or any number of other daily transactions. These are the people who make our lives pleasant, who stand by their word and defend the helpless. Another ancient Greek philosopher, Aristotle, was also intrigued by the idea of integrity, or as he put it, character. For Aristotle, the virtues of integrity, courage, and such were notions that each and every human being understood because they are members of the human community. And for Aristotle, the cultivation of those virtues was a lifelong endeavor. Our character, in his view, was and is constantly being formed by the choices we make in life. Aristotle predated the rise, rise of psychoanalysis, but his observations are in line with contemporary psychology in that he believed people will emulate behaviors of those they associate with. So an organization that rewards individuals for maintaining the highest ethical standards will perpetuate the cycle of good works. And for philosophers like Aristotle, the goal in each individual life is happiness, a deep sense of satisfaction that comes from living an honest life with our family, friends, colleagues, and ourselves. As Shakespeare wrote, trust not to rotten planks. In other words, the company we keep matters. The question often asked today is whether ideas like integrity are quaint relics of a bygone era, something that would be nice to emphasize, but after all, this is a highly competitive world, and only the most cunning succeed. It's easy to see how one might come to believe that moral values are a luxury of the past, but to do so is to put one's career in jeopardy. The responsibility of today's business leaders are heavily focused on ethics more than ever before. With ever-present media coverage, electronic communication that often lacks moral context, and shrinking resources, the business leaders of today need to practice the Aristotelian virtue of cultivating moral habits in every single aspect of his or her life. Business is neither moral nor amoral. Transactions take on meaning only when we assign meaning to them. We have ample evidence of organizations that destroy themselves from greed, avarice, or neglect. And we have equal evidence of organizations that flourish when leadership exemplifies the value of ethical work. Integrity is the glue that binds good people to good organizations.